If I take this square image I made in Mid Journey version 5 and upscale it, I get an image that is 1024 by 1024 pixels. And this works for pretty much every model in the Mid Journey algorithm from version 1 to version 5, Niji mode, except for MJ Test and MJ Test Photo. If I do the same with MJ Test and create an image, I get an image that is 2048 by 2048 pixels, which means unless we're using the test algorithm, every image we create in Mid Journey on its first upscale is 1024 by 1024 pixels if it is square. Otherwise, the test algorithm is 2048 by 2048 pixels. Now the resolution does change slightly when you play with the aspect ratio, but ultimately it's still gonna be about the same sort of resolution. This means if we wanna print this artwork, it's not we're gonna be very high resolution and will most likely come out looking fuzzy or sort of pixelated and it's not gonna look very good at all. Now we do have some other options such as light upscale redo or beta upscale redo if we're using version four. Version five doesn't have any extra upscalers. And if we wanna go all the way back to version three, there is also upscale to max. But the results they get is fairly similar to what we get when using the test algorithm or the test model. Uh, and in some instances, even lower than that. Even when using the light or beta upscalers, you actually lose detail in the process also. So we do need to find other ways to upscale. Now, good rule of thumb for printing is an image that is 300 DPI at the size it is printed. And DPI stands for dots per inch and each dot is essentially a pixel, which means if we have an image that is 1024 by 1024 pixels, then we can only really print it at a little over three inches by three inches, as we need 900 by 900 pixels to create a three inch by three inch image. One good example of this is a letter sized sheet, which is 8.5 inches by 11 inches, which is essentially 2550 pixels by 330 pixels at 300 dpi but there's actually even more to it than that now when you pay a printer to print something often they will put multiple prints onto larger sheets and then use a guillotine to cut that down when that gets cut down it needs some print to cut into to avoid having a white edge so they have what is called bleed a little bit of extra image around the cut that allows it something to cut into so you get a nice clean edge with the ink going straight to the edge. But the guillotine can vary, which is why you need some space, a little bit of bleed, but then also have some space on the inside for what's called margin for the printer to cut into. So what we need is a final size, including bleed with some space in from the edge to cover some margin and then we can find out what size our image needs to be and how much space we need to have around any elements that we don't want getting cut off. So what's the simple solution? We can make the image much larger than it needs to be and give about five or 10% space in from the edge. But how do we get our image from a low res image from Mid Journey or another AI art platform into something that's large and very detailed and bigger than we need for print? Here's a few ways of doing it. If you're using Photoshop, you can go to image, image size, and simply bump it up to about eight and a half thousand pixels. Make sure you choose something like Preserve Details 2.0 to make sure it does a good job of smoothing out the lines. Also try Preserve Details to see if you get a better result. I think Preserve Details 2.0 is the best, and I can upscale that way. The results are okay, but they're not the greatest. There is also the camera raw filter, which I'll pop a link to another video there. It does an okay job. Another thing you can do is actually just smooth this out by going to filter, stylize and oil paint, turning the lighting down or off completely. And you can actually smooth out and stylize your image with these sliders. And then you can actually, then you have this nice smooth image that when printed won't look too bad, but it's not the ideal solution. What we'd rather do is find an AI upscaler. We can use imagelarger.com, which is a pretty good upscaler on the internet. I can drag my cat image in there. I can upscale it up to four and hit start. Now I'm in Photoshop and this is a close up of the original image. This is a close up of our Photoshop resized image, which is a little bit sort of smooth. And this is the image larger image, which has added more detail and actually a little bit of noise and actually increased the size of the image this image is now 4096 by 4096 pixels. So even though it's half the resolution of our Photoshop upscale, it's a lot better than the Photoshop upscale. But keep in mind, image larger 
does cost money you get a few upscales for free but not much otherwise it's nine dollars a month and uh it's it's not bad but i've actually been using topaz gigapixel lately and it's a i pay once pay a hundred dollars for topaz gigapixel and it just runs on your computer and you have it for as long as you want i can drag my original cat image in and i can choose the standard model or an automatic setting and it's up to six times and making it 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. It's created hair and details using AI to improve the image. So let's save that and take a look. Now going through again, this is our original image, our Photoshop upscale, which is quite smooth. Our image large upscale has a few artifacts and is added in a bit of detail. And this is the Topaz upscale, which has added a ton of detail and the image looks amazing. And if you happen to be using Photoshop, you can then take it a step further and upscale that even more so. And it still looks pretty good and will print quite amazingly. This is at 100% resolution. And so Topaz is probably the best quality, but you do pay a pretty decent fee for it. Now, if you need a free solution, there's also upscale.media where I simply head in, upload my image, and I have a few options. For one, I can enhance the quality and I can upscale it a maximum of four times and I can still zoom in and check out the original versus the upscale. So I'm gonna download this image, but before I do, PNGs may not necessarily work on this platform and it does play up on occasion, but if you need to convert your mid-journey PNG to JPEG so you can get an upload because sometimes PNGs are too big, head to png to jpeg.com. You can upload here and convert a PNG to JPEG and then upload that JPEG to upscale.media. So let's download that image and compare it. So again, we have our original, our smooth Photoshop upscale, image larger, which is a bit better again. And then we have Topaz Gigapixel. And when we use the free upscaler, it's not quite as good, but it's still a bit better, about as good as the Photoshop upscale. It's probably better than the Photoshop upscale, not quite as good as image larger, or the Topaz upscale. So that is an option you can use if you don't have any money to actually afford a premium bit of software to upscale your image. And once you have your upscaled image, you're going to want to actually pop it into a document that is the correct size for your print. This is pretty easy with print on demand. For example, if we head to Redbubble, you'll see that if we upload our image, we can simply position it using their website interface to get what we need. Otherwise, you can contact your printer, find out how much bleed and margin they need, or you could just simply make sure you have plenty of space in your document. Let's look at a few ways to do that. If you're using canva.com, you can go up here to create a design. Again, custom size. And where it says pixels, you can change that to something like inches. Let's say you want a 20, say you want a 20 by 20 inch print. You can go 20 by 20 inches create new design. Once you're there, you go up the top here to file, view settings, and you can show margins. You can show print bleed, and then show rulers and guides. Head to uploads to upload your file. Click the image to pop it in. If I zoom in, you'll see there's a little bit of an edge outside and a line here for margin. Now this is a little over generous, but if I take this right up to the top, just outside, I wanna make sure there's no white edge on the outside. So I bring it right to that bleed edge and I simply overlay it and make sure I cover everything. And now I can see a little line on the inside for bleed, a little line for margin, and your printer might be able to resize this a little if there's not enough bleed, but this is a 20 inch image which is pretty big. That's about 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So that's probably gonna be more than enough. And once you're happy with that, go to share, head down to download. And then where it says PNG or file type, go to PDF print. And what you can do then is tick crop marks and bleed. And what I recommend is actually using CMYK, but this is a professional feature. So you can just stick with RGB. And if you're using uh, AI art, then your printer should be more than capable of printing a simple image from RGB and converting it to CMYK. So then I click download to download my file. I now have my PDF and you'll see there's a little bit of white around the outside. If I zoom into a corner, you'll see I now have crop marks. These are the marks the printer knows where to cut on the image. So I simply zoom out. 
we have a PDF with crop marks in the corner and we can send that to our printer to print our 20 inch by 20 inch print. If you're using Photoshop, you can go to File, New. Keep in mind, I recommend using something like Adobe Illustrator or InDesign if you're using text, but for AI art images, this will do the trick. What we wanna do is, what we've got recent, we're gonna go over here to Print, and we can choose the size from here. If it doesn't exist, we drop down, choose inches for our 20 by 20 inch print. I make it 20 inches by 20 inches, but before I click Create, what I wanna do is add my 5% around the outside, which means the image, if it has 5% on the left and 5% on the right, I need to add 10%. I make it 22 by 22. Because it's a larger print, I would go with a 5% bleed, which means adding 10%, so we double that number. If you're going for a much smaller print, like a, a letter or A4 size, you could probably get away with adding 10%, and therefore adding 20% to the size. So we've got 22, by 22 inches, we have 300 pixels per inch, which is the same as DPI, or dots per inch, and we click Create. Then go to File, Place, Embedded. We choose our image, and place it on the document. One thing you can also do is go up to Image, Image Size, and you can see it's actually 6,600 pixels by 6,600 pixels. And that is the size of a document at 22 inches by 22 inches. Another thing we can do is you see I have a ruler here, which I can turn on or off with Control or Command R. I right click and go to inches on that ruler. And now you can see I've got a 22 inch by 22 inch image. I can actually drag from the side to one inch, which is the area we added for bleed. Same again, I can see over here, one inch. And I need to keep my mouse cursor on, on the document. And I can get an idea by dragging in here. So 21 inches down here and 21 inches over here. This is roughly where the image will be cut if I actually, if they use the bleed that I intended. And this is a lot of space. And then again, if you want to, you can add it again to see what the margin of error is. And you can see the cat fits nicely within the margin as well. Keeping in mind, this is an advanced method. You don't necessarily have to go this far. This is just if you don't have the information you need from your printer, this is a really, really safe way of doing it. So then you, if you want to add any text, I would just add it within this area here if you want to be absolutely certain it doesn't get cut off. Once again, this is an overly safe, overly cautious way of doing it. Once you're done, you can go to File, Save a Copy, and you can just save this as a JPEG or a PNG if you want to, or you can go to Photoshop PDF, click Save, and in this area here, you can make sure you have the quality set to 300 pixels per inch. You can change the color to something else if you want to, so convert to destination like CMYK, something like that. Honestly, you could probably just keep it the same. Since it's AI art, we're not dealing with uh, complex design and vector files here, and we can save our PDF from there to send to the printer. So you get a PDF like this, and uh, you notice this one doesn't have crop marks. Uh, not necessarily essential. Um, I guess talk to your printer about that, but generally speaking, they will lay that up the way they want to when they print it. So this is the correct size. So you can just send that on as is to get printed. Keep in mind, you do need to get your aspect ratios at least pretty close for this to work. If you try to create a square image and pop it into a letter size document, that is 8.5 by 11 inches, it's not gonna fit. But if you're creating your image in mid-journey, you wanna add in dash dash AR, and if it is eight and a half by 11 inches, you can simply go eight five colon by 110, which is 8.5 inches by 11 inches, hit enter, and it will create it at that aspect ratio for you to then export and pop into your document to make sure that it actually fits. And that's pretty much all you need to take control of the printing process when trying to print AI art. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, if you want more mid-journey content and tutorials, check out my channel. Got a bunch of videos on there and uh, there's a bunch of links in the description to other resources. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.